Yes, welcome to Party People. It's been a grim week for British tabloid journalism. I'm so shaken by events, I'm beginning to question whether I should believe anything in print, even the daily horoscopes. But surely they must be true. Later in the programme, are our political leaders getting too young? And is that inexperience showing in the quality of decision making? Or is it what we all say beyond a certain age? But first tonight, the thin blue line. In a few moments, Britain's first Justice Secretary, Jack Straw, joins two other MPs to tell us why we are to lose so many police officers. The coalition say the cuts are essential, but as we'll hear in a few moments, they seem less keen on them when it's a local police station which must close. This tonight from our political correspondent, Claire Ashforth. Violent and abusive behaviour. It's a job not all of us would want. But a service on which we all rely. Now, like so many in the public sector, the police face cuts to their funding. Unlike those whose demonstrations and marches that police officers have had to police, officers themselves are forbidden from striking or from demonstrating. Instead, they have arrived here in Westminster today en masse to simply hand over their message to politicians. It's anticipated that police will face a 20% reduction in funding, which will lead to over £300 million of budget cuts, 6,000 job losses and 80 police stations closed across the North West. The figures may speak for themselves, but there's no shortage of others to speak out either. It's Christmas for criminals. For months, Lancashire Police have prepared to deliver their message to MPs, a message they've made very clear. 20% cuts is too fast, too deep. Um, the proposals by the coalition government um, are really hitting officers quite hard. I don't know how long all that is going to be sustainable for the sort of police service that we've got, that we're proud of and the public are proud of. But police are far from alone in their concerns. One of the biggest fears of funding cuts is the public's fear of increased crime. Good afternoon, the Bride Inn Hotel. Patrick speaking. Patrick McPartland's business relies on Blackpool being seen as safe. A police presence cuts crime. The police stations reassure. Now both are to vanish. And some time ago, it got really bad around here. Um, and even the holidaymakers were, were afraid to go out. Uh, there are a lot of improvements coming on now in the area. And uh, I think the police, it would be a terrible shame if they shut the station. But I think the government, as I said, need to listen to the communities. They need to listen to the people. And those concerns are what Greater Manchester Police Chief Constable is addressing directly. Off the streets, into the town halls, and before those he's pledged to protect. We are very much your police force. We are here to serve you. But on the other hand, we know that we are faced with some very difficult financial challenges. So people read the papers, they'll be very worried about crime rates going up and about there not being enough bobbies on the beads. What I don't understand is how you're going to achieve that lower crime rate, because if you're cutting people, then you're losing the place altogether anyway. For the public here, they're very concerned um, because this is a drastic reduction in the number of staff and perhaps they don't fully realise how there has been a lot of growth in bureaucracy and red tape in policing over recent years in the stat that we've got to eliminate first. It may be the police's role to protect the public. Now they hope politicians will protect their funding. For an organisation used to drawing the line, many feel that that line has been crossed. Well, indeed, has it. And first, Justice Secretary, the Blackburn MP, Jack Straw. I'm also joined by the Blackpool Conservative MP, Paul Maynard, and Mark Hunter, who represents Cheadle for the Liberal Democrats. Gentlemen, thank you very much indeed for joining me. Jack Straw, if I could begin with you, first of all, the government and police on a collision course. This is very familiar ground. The truth is that while you were in government, you really ducked this in 2005, didn't you? No, we didn't duck it at all. Um, they are on a collision course, and they're also on a collision course for a reason that Claire, your political uh, reporter, didn't mention, which is that they're proposing the establishment of these police commissioners to take the elected police commissioners to take the place of the existing police authorities. This is a completely unnecessary change. It's going to cost at least £100 million. It'll be disruptive and, it, uh, and it, it, it could lead and almost certainly will to the politicisation of the police. Well, let me, and, come, and let, let me, so, well, let me just do it. So at, at a time of unquestionable pressure 
on budgets. Um, that should be scrapped full stop. Um, so far as the overall issue of uh, pressure on the budgets, we made it clear uh, before the election that there would have to be uh, cuts in public services. I was doing that in the Ministry of Justice, but not in policing. But so far as the policing cuts are concerned, these are too far too fast and it's extraordinary that the Conservative Party should be doing this when in the past they've said that they are the party of law and but order. But the Conservative Party may be doing this because despite what you said in 2005 Charles Clark then Home Secretary proposed reducing the number of police forces in England and Wales from 43 to about 12. He said small forces were inefficient, Cumbria was going to merge with another force with yeah. and then you walked away from well, this look, completely leaving it to another government. No, I mean, look, the, the, the problem that Charles faced uh, was that there was huge Huge opposition. Yeah, a, 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 but you're the government. No, hang on a second. A, across the country, the second problem, as I can tell you, having reorganised the Metropolitan Police in uh, 1998 to bring its boundaries to within the Great London boundaries, is that reorganisations cost a lot of money at the time of the reorganisation. So there might have been, from Charles's proposals, some savings down the track but there would have been a cost at the beginning, just as there's going to be a cost, a completely unnecessary cost, which is going to cost bobbies from this proposal to have police commissioners. If we believe what Jack Straw is saying, Paul Maynard, it's your government's fault. Well, it's always a typical cliche, isn't it? Too far, too fast. I actually think it's far more complex than that, actually. In Lancashire, we're having to make 42 million of reductions. The Chief Constable's done a good job, by and large, in applying those reductions. For example, in Blackpool, as you showed on the TV, we're going to have more community police officers on the beat. But you've been very critical of Steve Finnegan, the Chief Constable. I have indeed, because where I diverge from Steve is that on the issue of the police estate, we were discussing police stations, their closures. Rather than having a discussion about public accessibility, how the public can access the police, that was a key theme we heard from the residents, all we've been presented with are a shut or closed process, not a discussion about how we actually maintain but, 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 accessibility. But they're saying it's, they're saying it's your problem because you're driving the cuts in. Are you saying the Chief Constables and maybe the Chief Constable Lancashire is playing politics over this? Well, who's to say? All I can do is base it on what my own constituents are telling me. And we're all frustrated that whilst Cleveland's police station is scheduled to close, the Consultation doesn't offer any alternative for local people, but on the streets, I hear they're planning to buy a shop front counter in Cleveland oh. that the police chief constable doesn't claim is going to occur. Mark Hunter? The police are undoubtedly facing major resource challenges at the moment, but let nobody pretend that this is something new. I mean, frankly, that's been the case for years. Your report earlier on talked about closure of police stations. Before I became the MP for Cheadle in 2005, our Labour-run police authority in Greater Manchester had already closed every police station within the boundary of my parliamentary constituency. Well, well, absolutely, because so in that's been a fact of life in for a good many of us. In 2007, you said it is only with more bobbies on the beat uh, that we can really cut crime and antisocial behaviour. I still think that's true. Still think that's true. So are you true. uncomfortable no, with what no, your well, government is we, proposing? We're uncomfortable about the need for, for any um, reductions in public spending. I mean, nobody's so doing... So are you going to do a no, U-turn on this? Nobody's doing this with a glad heart. But what people, I do think, understand the need for uh, savings to be made in the public sector. That's what the agenda of the government is But too is far, too now. fast is what Jack no, Straw is saying. That. It's easy rhetoric. Mm. Easy rhetoric and frankly we'd be better served by having a sensible debate about what the issues are. And but I have you, confidence but, but, but hold on, Mark, no, no, I have this confidence question. in the <clears throat> Chief Constable of Greater Manchester who on record has said his priority is maximising frontline resources okay. and he and his colleagues are doing a first rate job of trying to do Jack precisely Straw? that. Well, why not the pair of you? cancel this unnecessary, dangerous reorganisation of the police and save at least tens of million, well, it's not a hundred. That's one talking one about un no, unnecessary no, expenses, well, well, why didn't you scrap identity cards? Well, at least well, we stopped the well, waste well, of money on that. Yeah. Perhaps no, if we'd no, not no, spent no, millions and millions of pounds on ID this cards, is, um, we would have had to this do this. Something you could do. This is something you could do, the Liberal Democrats could do, 
by vetoing this unnecessary reorganisation. Are you going to do it? I think that there is a, a genuine issue about police commissioners. I'm not entirely persuaded about it, if you're asking my personal opinion. But within the coalition, we are trying to exert our influence as a party of 57 MPs <coughs> in a much larger group. So and we don't, we don't win on every I'm single happy issue. To respond because no. very saw quickly. From the, we saw from the film earlier, what people care about is accountability, accessibility to question what their police are doing. We didn't get it after 13 years of you. We're trying to give it that degree of accountability. Jack Straw, let me, let me ask you a final point. Uh, the crime figures that have come out today have gone down in the Northwest. Yes. What do you think the risks are here with these changes? Well, look, crime has been going down for the last uh, 16 years, and we've now got lower levels of crime across all kinds of crimes, and Lancashire has been fantastic uh, at uh, achieving this, as I'm sure Paul will acknowledge. The danger is that over time, crime will start to creep up and it will be a combination of a lack of uh, police resourcing and, I'm afraid, the extraordinarily soft policies that the new Justice Secretary Kenneth Clark's adopting. All right, let me leave it there for a moment. It is a subject we'll come back to. And after the break, we're going to be asking this question. They say the police are getting younger, but what about the politicians? Does age matter? Mm -hmm.